Hi, let's start with the pectoral region chapter. In this chapter, we'll be covering the four important muscles pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis minor, subclavius, and serratus anterior. One important fascia, clavipectoral fascia, and memory glands. So, let's begin with the pectoralis major muscle. Before that, just put a simple diagram draw sternum, clavicle, first one to ten ribs scapula humerus with the uh, intertubercular sulcus red labeling shows the origin and blue one shows the insertion of the muscle pectoralis major has been divided into two parts one is the small clavicular head and large sternocostal head origin of the muscle pectoralis major as I said divided into two parts so clavicular head arises from the anterior surface of medial half of the clavicle whereas sternocostal head arises from lateral half of anterior surface of sternum medial parts of second to sixth costal cartilages and aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so just remember that clavicular head arises from medial half of clavicle whereas sternocostal head arises from anterior surface of sternum, second to sixth coastal cartilages and upon areas of external oblique muscles. Insertion The pectoralis major will be inserted into the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus and uh, it forms a U-shaped tendon. The anterior lamina of the U-shaped tendon formed by the clavicular head whereas the posterior lamina is formed by the sternocostal head. Now supply of the muscle it is supplied by two important nerves one is the lateral pectoral nerve its root value is C5, C6 and C7 one medial pectoral nerve its root value is C8 and T1 actions of the muscle the clavicular head it assists in the flexion of the arm whereas sternocostal head it assists in adduction of the arm and medial rotation of the arm remember that flexion, adduction and medial rotation of arm it takes place at the shoulder joint clinical aspects of the muscle there is one important clinical aspect that is congenital anomaly in this as I said there are two parts the, usually one part of the muscle will be absent that usually the sternocostal part then clinical testing of the pectoralis major muscle it is used to assess the tone and power of the muscle just ask the patient to lift the heavy rod the clavicular head will be prominent when depressing the rod the sternocostal head will be prominent second muscle pectoralis minor muscle the put the same diagram and uh, origin of the muscle it arises from third to fifth ribs near the costal cartilages and insertion of the muscle it is inserted into the medial border of the upper surface of, of coracoid process so origin is from third to fifth rib and insertion is from medial border of upper surface of coracoid process so now supply of the pectoralis minor muscle it is same as that of the pectoralis major muscle that is pec medial pectoral nerve and lateral pectoral nerve actions of the muscle it assists in protraction of the scapula protraction means mm, bringing the scapula lateral and closer to the chest wall Depressi depression of the point of shoulder while shoulder movement and it is also accessory muscle of respiration mostly it helps in forced inspiration so again in actions it helps in protraction of the scapula depress the shoulder joint and uh, accessory muscle of respiration so now let's talk about the clinical aspect it is a key muscle of axillary region because axillary artery just passes beneath this muscle and it is used to divide the axillary artery next muscle subclavius just draw the head of the sternum clavicle and first strip it uh, uh, arises from the first strip near their costochondral junction when comes to insertion it is inserted into the subclavian groove where to find the subclavian groove it is just middle one third of the inferior surface of clavicle 
nerves of naphtha muscle it is supplied by nerve to subclavius it is a branch from the upper trunk actions of the muscle it assists in stabilization of the clavicle during shoulder movement by pulling it inferiorly and medially clinical aspect of the muscle uh, there are so many neurovascular structures is passing behind this muscle so it uh, provide protection to those neurovascular structures those neurovascular structures are subclavian vessels subclavian artery and vein and trunks of the brachial plexus our next muscle is the serratus anterior just rather sternum first one to 10 ribs and the scapula so origin of the muscle the serratus anterior muscle it arises by eight digitations from upper eight ribs from 1 to 8 insertion of the muscle as i said earlier eight digitations from upper eight ribs so first two digitations from first two ribs will be inserting onto the superior angle of the scapula as i showed in the diagram next two digitations will be inserting onto the medial border of the scapula and last four digitations from the lower four ribs will be inserting into the inferior angle of the scapula now supply of the muscle is mainly supplied by the long thoracic nerve are also called as nerve to serratus anterior its root value is c5 c6 and c7 and uh, actions of the muscle its its main action is a powerful protraction of the scapula as i already said protraction means bringing the scapula laterally and more closer to the chest wall it will be helping in the boxing movement so and it also assists in overhead abduction of arm by rotating scapula laterally and upward and it keeps the medial wall of the scapula in firm contact with the chest wall clinical aspect of the muscle there is one important condition called winging of scapula it is mainly due to the paralysis of serratus anterior muscle so this condition is mainly due to the injury or any kind of compression of the long thoracic nerve in that region clinical features of this condition are there will be weakened protraction of the scapula means their punch will lack the power so while boxing they won't have the much power as normal person do so when patient pushes the arm against the wall medial border and inferior angle of the scapula become unduly prominent and that condition is known as winging of scapula as in picture you see that uh, medial border and inferior angle so let's start with the main important fascia that is the clavipectoral fascia just put the simple diagram and uh, start labeling it investing layer of deep cervical fascia it is a fascia of the neck uh, it joins the clavicle and below that there will be clavipectoral fascia and inferiorly axillary fascia so clavipectoral fascia it starts from the clavicle and ends at the axillary fascia and three muscles pectoris major minor and subclavius muscle just put the another diagram so this diagram will show the extent of the fascia very clearly so let's discuss the extent of the clavipectoral fascia the clavipectoral fascia extends vertically from clavicle above and axillary fascia below when it comes to medially it starts from first rib costoclavicular ligament and it blends with the upper two intercostal spaces in laterally the coracoid process coracoclavicular ligament and tendons of the bicep brachii and coracobrachialis so just remember that when it comes to extent put three head subheadings vertically medially and laterally vertically it extends from clavicle to axillary fascia medially it starts from first rib costoclavicular ligament and blends with the upper two 
into costal spaces. Laterally, it extends up to the corocoid process and corococlavicular ligament and tendons of bicep brachii and coracobrachialis. So there is one another important structures which are will be piercing this fascia. So basically, this clavipectoral fascia will be covering the uh, pectoralis minor muscle and it just lies beneath the pectoralis major muscle. So there are four important structures which are piercing it. There is one mnemonic called lat lis. So lat means lateral pectoral nerve, thoracochromial artery, lymphatics and cephalic vein. Let's start with the memory gland. It is the most important structure present in the pectoral region. Definition of the memory glands. It is a modified apocrine sweat gland present in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. Location of the gland. It is situated in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. A small extension from its superior lateral part, however, pierces the deep fascia of the axilla and goes into the axillary region. That part is known as axillary tail of spence. So, extent of the memory glands. Uh, vertically, it extends from the second rib to the sixth rib. Horizontally, it extends from lateral border of the sternum to mid axillary line. Shape of the gland usually, it is hemispherical bulge. And relations of the gland when it comes to relation, the deep aspect of breast is related to the following structure one is the pectoral fascia and three muscles pectoralis major muscle, serratus anterior and external oblique muscle. Let's discuss the structure of the gland. The breast consists of following three components skin, stroma and parenchyma. Just put the diagram and uh, after that under skin we will be discussing the nipple and areola. Nipple it is a conical projection below the center of the breast, usually at the level of the fourth intercostal space. Areola it is a circular area of pigmented skin surrounding the base of the nipple. It contains a large number of modified sebaceous glands, particularly at its outer margin. When it comes to stroma, it contains connective tissue and the fat. In connective tissue, there is one important ligament called suspensor ligament of Cooper. It mainly gives contour and shape to the uh, breast. Parenchyma, parenchyma or glandular tissue of the breast, it is the main component and helps in secretion of the milk to feed the newborn baby. It contains 15 to 20 lobes arranged in lobular fashion and each lobe further divided into various lobules and each lobule further divided into clusters of acini. And the produced milk will be temporarily stored in the lactiferous sinus and later drained via lactiferous duct and nipple. Blood supply of memory gland, so arterial supply. Memory gland is supplied by the following five branches of the arteries. From axillary artery, three branches will be supplying. One is the lateral thoracic artery, acromial thoracic artery through its pectoral branch, superior thoracic artery, and internal thoracic artery via its perforating branches and posterior intercostal artery. Venous drainage of the memory gland takes place by the following veins. Usually the veins follow the arteries. So it is supplied by three important veins, axillary vein, internal thoracic vein and posterior intercostal vein. It forms two plexus in the breast. One is a superior venous plexus and another one is a deep venous plexus. Superior venous plexus will draining the internal thoracic vein and deep venous plexus will be draining the axillary vein and posterior intercostal vein. No supply. It is primarily somatosensory. It is derived from second to sixth intercostal nerves through their anterior and lateral cutaneous branches. Lymphatic drainage of the breast. So the knowledge of the lymphatic drainage of the breast is of great significance to surgeon because of the metastasis of the carcinoma of the memory gland. So the, it is divided into two important components. One is the lymph node draining the breast and lymphatic drainage of the breast. Before that we will be dividing the memory gland into four quadrant. One is the 
upper medial upper lateral and lower lateral and lower medial quadrant the red arrow mark will be showing the lymphatic drainage of the four quadrants to various lymph nodes surrounding the mammary glands so let's start with the lymph nodes draining the breast the lymph from the breast is drained into following group of lymph nodes the prominent and major group of lymph node is axillary lymph node it has five component anterior posterior central lateral and inter internal mammary lymph nodes posterior intercostal lymph nodes and cephalic or deltopectoral lymph nodes so remember that there are four major group of lymph nodes draining the mammary gland one is the axillary group of lymph nodes deltopectoral lymph node and internal mammary lymph node and posterior intercostal lymph nodes so as i already said breast has been divided into four quadrant one is the upper lateral upper medial lower lateral and lower medial so let's start with the lymphatic draining the breast the lymphatic draining the breast are divided into two groups one is the superficial lymphatics and deep lymphatics In the superficial lymphatics it drains the skin of the breast except nipple and areola whereas the deep lymphatic drain the parenchyma along with nipple and areola and again as like that of the venous plexus the lymphatics also forms a plexus in the mammary gland and that is also known as subareolar plexus of sepe remember that subareolar plexus of sepe and it later drain into the anterior group of axillary lymph nodes so let's discuss the quadrant wise so the lower lateral quadrant will be draining the posterior intercostal lymph node and posterior and anterior group of axillary lymph nodes whereas lower medial quadrant will be draining the internal mammary lymph nodes and subperitoneal lymph plexus upper lateral quadrant will be draining anterior and posterior axillary lymph node and upper medial quadrant will be draining the internal mammary lymph nodes so the anterior and posterior lymph nodes of the axillary group will be later draining to the central lymph nodes of the axillary lymph node and later they will be draining the apical group of axillary node via deltopectoral lymph nodes clinical aspect of the mammary gland carcinoma of the breast it is the most common cancer in females it arises from epithelial cells of the lactiferous ducts so the clinical features are presence of a painless hard lump breast becomes fixed and immobile that is due to infiltration of suspensory ligaments and retraction of skin and nipple due to infiltration of suspensory ligament retraction of nipple due to infiltration and pudy orange appearance of skin that is due to obstruction of superficial lymphatics so investigation means uh, how you will find diagnose the carcinoma of breast via physical examination mammography and fnac treatment mastoidectomy with axillary lymph nodes removal mastoidectomy means will cut the whole breast as you can see in the picture they will be showing the retracted nipple and orange like appearance of the skin the axilla or armpit is a pyramidal space between the upper part of the arm and side of the chest wall bounded in front and behind by the axillary folds the contents of the axilla axillary artery axillary vein cause of the brachial plexus axillary lymph nodes fibro fatty tissue axillary tail of breast and long thoracic and intercostal nerves let's continue with the axillary artery axillary artery is the main artery of the upper limb it begins at the outer border of the first rib as a continuation of the subclavian artery ends by becoming the brachial artery at the lower border of teres major muscle the course of the artery in axilla it runs from its apex to the base along the lateral wall nearer to the anterior wall than the posterior wall during its course through the axilla it is crossed on its superficial aspect by the pectoralis minor muscle which divides it into three parts axillary vein is medial to the artery 
and chords of the breakup plugs are arranged around the second part of the artery. Parts of the axillary artery. The axillary artery is divided into following three parts by pectoralis spina muscle. First branch gives the superior thoracic artery. It supplies the muscles and medial wall of the axilla. And second part gives the thoracocromial artery. It is further divided into pectoral branch, deltoid and acromial branch and clavicular branch. Lateral thoracic artery supplies the pectoralis major and minor muscles. And third part carries the sub subscapular artery and uh, it supplies an upper triangular and intermuscular spaces and ACHA anterior circumflex humeral artery it supplies the head of the humerus and shoulder joint posterior circumflex humeral artery PCHA it supplies the deltoid muscle and shoulder joint relations of the axillary artery first part uh, anteriorly it is related to the pectoralis major and loop of communication between lateral and medial pectoral nerves Posteriorly, it is related to medial cord of the brachial plexus, long thoracic nerve, serratus anterior. Medially, it is related to axillary vein and lateral, lateral cord and posterior cords of the brachial plexus. Second part, it is related to the pectoralis minor anteriorly, posterior cord of the brachial plexus posteriorly and subscapularis. In medially, it is related to the medial cord and axillary vein. Laterally, it is related to the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. And third part, it is related to the anteriorly medial root of the median nerve. Posteriorly, radial nerve, axillary nerve, subscapularis, anterior major muscle, and medially it is related to the axillary vein, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, ulnar nerve, and laterally it is related to the musculocutaneous nerve. Scapular anastomosis it is principally formed between the branches of the first part of the subclavian artery and third part of the axillary artery. Around the body of the scapula, suprascapular artery, deep branch of the transverse cervical artery from the subclavian artery will anastomose with the circumflex scapular artery. Over the acromion process, thoracoacromial artery, suprascapular artery and posterior circumflex humeral artery will all will together to form the anastomosis around the acromion process. Clinical aspect, uh, collateral circulation through so scapular anastomosis, it takes place in between the first part of the subclavian artery and third part of the axillary artery. Brachial plexus, it is a plexus of nerves formed by the anterior rami of lower four cervical and the first thoracic spinal nerves with little contribution from the C4 to T2 spinal nerves. Components, it has four components, roots, trunks, divisions and cords. Roots is basically from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 and they are deep to the scalinous anterior muscle. Trunks or C5, C6 unite to form the upper trunk, C7 alone form the middle trunk and C8 and T1 unite to form the lower trunk. Divisions, each trunk will be divided into anterior and posterior division. Cords, anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunk unite to form the lateral cord and the anterior division of the lower trunk unite as the medial cord and the posterior divisions of all three trunks unite to form the posterior cord. Branches of the brachial plexus uh, from roots uh, there will be two branches one is a long thoracic nerve to serratus anterior muscle its root value is C5, C6 and C7 and dorsal scapular nerve its root value is C5. And from trunks, uh, from upper trunk, uh, suprascapular nerve C5 and C6, and nerve to subclavius C5 and C6. From division, there are no branches. And from cords, from lateral cord, three branches lateral pectoral nerve C5, C6, and C7, lateral root of median nerve C5, C6, and C7, musculocutaneous nerve C5, C6, and C7. From the medial cord, medial pectoral nerve C8 and T1. Medial cutaneous nerve of the arm C8 and T1, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm C8 and T1, and medial root of the median nerve, and ulnar nerve, its root value will be C7, C8, and T1. From the posterior cord, radial nerve C, uh, C5 to T1, axillary nerve C5 and C6, 
तो राय को डॉसल और द नो टू लाइटिस मस्ट डॉसी इट्स रूट वाले वो सी सिक्स सी सेवन एंड सी एट एंड अपर स्केपुलर सॉरी अपर सब स्केपुलर नो सी फाइन सी सिक्स एंड लोअर सब स्केपुलर नो सी फाइन सी सिक्स क्लिनिकल एस्पेक्ट फर्स्ट विल बी डिस्कसिंग द अर्ब्स पॉइंट इट इज द रीजन ऑफ द अपर ट्रंक ऑफ द ब्रेक एप्लेक्सेस वेयर सिक्स नर्व्स मीट एज फॉलोस फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स सर्वाइकल रूट जॉइन टू फ्रॉम द अपर ट्रंक एंड इट गिव्स ऑफ टू नर्व्स व्हाट इज द सप्रेस कैपुलर नर्व एंड नर्व टू सबक्लेवियस एंड दिस रीजन इज नोन एज द अर्ब्स पॉइंट अर्ब्स पैरालिसिस इट इज मेनली कॉज्ड ड्यू टू द एक्सेसिव इंक्रीज इन द एंगल बिटवीन द हेड एंड द शोल्डर and it forms a deformity typical deformity called the policeman stiff hand or so in this deformity the arm is adducted medially rotated and the forearm is extended and pronated and there will be loss of sensation along the outer aspect of the arm and then the clumkis paralysis it involves c8 and d1 and uh, it mainly causes it due to the hyperabduction of the arm clinical feature client loss of sensation along the medial border of forearm and hand and the horner syndrome back of the body and scapular region uh, let's discuss about the trapezius muscle it is a triangular muscle on the back of the neck and upper thorax origin of the muscle it arises from the medial third of the superior nuchal line external occipital protuberances and ligamentum nuchae spine of seven cervical vertebra and spine of all thoracic vertebrae from t1 to t12 insertion it has been divided into three fibers superior middle and lower fibers superior fibers are inserted into the posterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle and middle fibers are inserted into the medial margin of the acromion and upper lip of the crest of spine of the scapula and lower fibers are inserted into the delta tubercle no supply of the muscle motor supply is provided by the spinal part of the accessory nerve and proprioceptive sensation is provided by the ventral rami of c3 and c4 actions upper fibers will assist in shrugging the shoulder and middle fibers bracing back the shoulder lower fibers in depressing the medial part of the spine of the scapula Latissimus dorsi it is a wide flat triangular muscle in the lumbar region and lower thorax it is mostly superficial except a small portion covered posteriorly by the lower part of the trapezius origin of the muscle t7 to t12 from the tendinous fibers and uh, posterior lamina of thoracolumbar fascia from tendinous fibers and outer lip of posterior part of the iliac crest from muscular slips fleshy slips from the lower 3 or 4 ribs dorsal surface of inferior angle of the scapula insertion from its uh, extensive origin fibers pass laterally with different degree of obliquity which is inserted into the floor of endo tubercular sulcus of the humerus no supply it is supplied by the thoracodorsal nerve its root value is c6 c7 and c8 from the posterior cord actions uh, it helps in adduction extension medial rotation of the humerus pulls up the trunk upward and forwards while climbing swinging of arm and it assists in walking violent expiratory effort clinical aspect musculocutaneous flap of latissimus dorsi is often used in reconstructing a breast following mastectomy the latissimus dorsi can be used as auto transplant to repair a surgically removed portion of heart and it requires a pacemaker thromboidus major muscle origin of the muscle it is from the spine of t2 to t5 vertebra and the supraspinatus ligament insertion it is inserted into the medial border of scapula between root of spine and the inferior angle of the scapula and nerve supply of the thromboidus major it is supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve its root value is c5 and actions of the thromboidus is uh, retracting the scapula as in squaring of the shoulder triangle of auscultation it is a small triangular gap in the musculature on the back of the thorax near the inferior angle of the scapula its boundaries are superior horizontal boundaries border of the latissimus dorsi medial border of the scapula inferior lateral border of the trapezius The floor of the triangle is formed by the sixth and seventh ribs and sixth intercostal space. 
Its main significance is the upper part of the lower lobe lies in deep to the sixth intercostal space. Deuteral muscle is a 3 in 1 muscle. It has been divided into anterior unipinnate, posterior unipinnate, and middle multipinnate. Origin of the muscle Anterior unipinnate arises from the upper surface and uh, anterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle. Middle multipinnate arises from the upper surface of the acromion. Posterior unipinnate arises from the crest of the spine of the scapula. Insertion all these will be inserted into the V-shaped delta tuberosity in the lateral aspect of the mid shaft of the humerus. Nerve supply is by axillary nerve C5 and C6. Actions anterior fibers help in flexing and medial rotation of the arm. Middle fibers are help in abduction 15 to 90 degree and posterior fibers help in extension and lateral rotation of the arm. Structures under cover of deltoid muscle, bones, humerus, acromion process, joints, shoulder joint and ligament coracoacromial ligament and the bursa supra, subscapular subacromian and infraspinatus bursa muscles insertions of uh, pectoris major minor teres minor platysmus tonsi and sitz group and origin of biceps coracobrachialis and triceps vessels pch and ach nose axillary nerve spaces quadrangular intermuscular spaces Rotator cuff is the name given to the tendons of supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis which are fused with the underlying capsule of the shoulder joint. The primary function of the rotator cuff muscles is to grasp a relatively large head of the humerus and hold it against a smaller and shallow glenoid cavity. Now we will be looking into the sits muscles positioning. Supraspinatus located superiorly, subscapularis located anteriorly, teres minor and infraspinatus located posteriorly. So movements of the scapula. The protraction it is mainly assisted by the serratus anterior pectoralis minor muscle. Retraction by trapezius middle fibers from is minor and from is major. Elevation by trapezius upper fibers and levator scapula. Depression, pectoralis minor, trapezius lower fibers, lattice plus dorsi, and medial rotation by levator scapulae, rhomboidus minor and major, and lateral rotation by trapezius upper and lower fibers and serratus anterior. Subscapular intermuscular spaces. And the main important one is the quadrangular space. Its boundaries are superiorly teres minor, subscapularis and capsule of the shoulder joint inferiorly teres major medially by long head of triceps and laterally by surgical neck of the humerus structures passing through these spaces are axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery and vein axillary nerve it arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus near the lower border of the subscapularis it runs backwards on subscapularis to pass through the quadrangular space along with the posterior circumflex humeral artery here it is intimately related to the medial aspect of the surgical neck of the humerus immediately inferior to the capsule of the shoulder joint. The nerve gives a branch to the shoulder joint and runs laterally to divide it into anterior and posterior division. The posterior division will provide nerve supply to teres minor muscle and posterior part of the deltoid and uh, continues as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. An anterior branch will provide the insertion to the deltoid and cutaneous branches of the skin. Damage to axillary nerve can lead to impaired abduction of shoulder due to paralysis of the deltoid muscle, loss of sensation of the lower half of deltoid regimental patch, loss of shoulder contour with prominence of greater tubercle of the humerus. Shoulder joint. Uh, it is a joint between the head of humerus and glenoid cavity of the scapula. Type. Uh, shoulder joint is a ball and socket type of synovial joint. Articular surfaces. Head of humerus and glenoid cavity. And glenoid cavity is deepened by the fibrocotyledonous ring called glenoid labrum. Ligaments. The main one is the capsular ligament and also known as the joint capsule. And it is attached medially to the margins of the glenoid cavity beyond the glenoid labrum, laterally to anatomical neck of the humerus. 
except inferiorly where it extends downwards 1.5 cm more on the surgical neck of the humerus. Glenohumeral ligaments there are three thickenings in the anterior part of the fibrous capsule to strengthen it. These are called superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments. They are visible only to the inferior of the joint. Coracohumeral ligament. It is a strong band of fibrous tissue that passes from the base of the coracoid process to the anterior aspect of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Transverse humeral ligament. It bridges the Precipital groove between the greater tubercle and lesser tubercle. Accessory ligaments, uh, coracoacromial ligament. It extends between the coracoid and acromion process. Coracoacromial arch. It is formed by the coracoid process, acromion process, and coracoacromial ligament in between them. Bursa related to the shoulder joint, subscapular bursa. It lies between the tendon of subscapularis and neck of the scapula and protects the tendon from friction against the neck. Subacromial bursa. It lies between the coracoacromial ligament and acromion process above and supraspinatus tendon and joint capsule below. It is also referred as subdeltoid bursa. Infraspinatus bursa. It lies between the tendon of infraspinatus and posterior lateral aspect of the joint capsule. The bursa on the shoulder joint are clinically important as some of them communicate with synovial cavity of the joint. Consequently, opening a bursa may mean entering into the cavity of the joint. Relations of the shoulder joint Anteriorly, it is related to the subscapularis, subscapular bursa, coracobrachialis, short head of biceps brachii, and deltoid. Posteriorly, it is related to infraspinatus, teres minor, and deltoid. And superiorly, it is related to coracoacromial arch, subacromial bursa, supraspinatus muscle, and deltoid muscle. And inferiorly, it is related to the long head of triceps, axillary nerve, and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Arterial supply. It is mainly supplied by the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries, suprascapular artery, subscapular artery. No supply by axillary nerve, suprascapular nerve, and musculocutaneous nerve. Factors providing stability are the rotator cuff, musculotendinous cuff, coracochromial arch, long head of biceps tendon, and glenoid labrum. And movements of the shoulder joint. The main movements uh, are the flexion. It is provided by the pectoralis major and deltoid and its range of motion is 90 degree. Extension deltoid and latissimus torsi 45 degree. Abduction by deltoid and supraspinatus and its range of motion is 180 degree. Adduction by deltoid and pectoralis major muscle and its range of motion is 45 degree. Lateral rotation by deltoid 45 degree and medial rotation subscapularis and its range of motion is 55 degree. Clinical aspect, dislocation of the shoulder joint often occur inferiorly and it is divided into anterior dislocation and posterior dislocation and its main cause is excessive extension and lateral rotation and clinical features are hollow contour in rounded shoulder and prominence of shoulder tip, frozen shoulder and it is also known as adhesive capsulitis. Uh, it has pain with limitation of movements due to shrinkage of joint capsule and it is an age phenomenon. Rotator cuff disorders, calcific supraspinatus tendinitis, and subacromial bursitis. Venous drainage of the upper limb. It has two important topics dorsal venous arch and uh, cephalic vein. Let's continue with the dorsal venous arch. It is a network of veins on the dorsum of hand. Tributaries. Three dorsal carpal veins. A dorsal digital vein from the medial side of the little finger, a dorsal digital vein from the lateral side of the index finger, and two dorsal digital veins of the thumb and veins draining the palm of the hand.
cephalic vein it continues as dorsal venous arch curves of the vein crosses anatomical snuff box ascends on radial border of forearm pierces deep fascia at lower border of the pectoralis major muscle ends in delta pectoral groove pierces clavipectoral fascia and drain into axillary vein significance of the vein is it, this is a preferred vein for the hemodialysis